Graham Calliford joins us now from London via Skype. Graham, just reading that story sends, you know, chills and it's a very, very sad story. Take us through how, um, you know, just looking at the title, The Gambia Has Become a Brit Pedo Paradise. Take us through mm -hmm. that title and how you came upon the story and the, the expose that has come through. Well, I was actually in the Gambia covering a, a different story, but whilst I was there, it became very apparent, um, and you'd see it all the time, that there were a lot of uh, older Western men who were caring for young Gambian children. Um, and that was obvious because of, you know, um, it, it's very clear from, from how they look, but it's um, almost definitely the biological father. Uh, so this caught my attention, and the more we looked into the story, um, the more it became apparent that the Gambia has a serious um, child abuse uh, problem and a serious problem with um, tourists travelling there um, with the specific intention of, the, of abusing children. Um, and so that became the story uh, that I was uh, that I ended up covering, um, and it's a story that's had a, a piece to say it's had a, had a huge reaction, and people all around the world have been very concerned about this and have, have wanted to do what they can to help. I've had lots of people um, emailing me and contacting me through social media, um, asking what they can do to improve the situation there. Um, and unfortunately, I don't um, have a very clear idea of what to tell them, because it's a, it's a very complex problem. The Gambia is a very poor country, um, and so I don't think there's any easy solutions um, to how you improve things down there and how, and how you protect these children. Um, there don't seem to be many charities, at least there's not many international charities that are actively involved in helping children in the Gambia. Um, and the people who are trying to help often um, individuals from the West. And sadly, a lot of this help is laced with uh, menace. It's laced with sour apples. And uh, people are going to the Gambia um, posing as good Samaritans when they really their intentions are to, to abuse young children. Now, Graham, what happens afterwards uh, once the, the the children have been sold to these pedophiles? Um, what happens? How long are they there for? Uh, maybe a couple of weeks, as it says that your story says they're tourists. And then, what happens when they leave? Are they the children sent back to their families? Do they take the children with them? What's the situation there? Well, I mean, I can tell you with absolute certainty that the people who are travelling to the Gambia to commit these crimes um, are not facing justice, and that. They're not being arrested. They're not being prosecuted, um, and that's and that's an absolute fact. Because I mean, if you, if you, if you go through the case histories, there are very, very, very few cases where these people um, ever see a courtroom or the inside of a police cell. Um, the the one case I could find was a Norwegian man who was already a convicted um, sex offender uh, in Norway. He travelled to the Gambia. Um, he wormed his way into a family there used a large number of children, uh, was arrested, was put in jail, but then he was pardoned by the president for reasons that have never been explained. And I mean, um, that is um, shocking and it's outrageous and, and that is something that needs to be, that needs to change. I mean, they've ne they now do have the laws in the Gambia to prevent this kind of thing, but for some reason they're not enforcing them. And, and that is what one very clear and obvious way the government could take action is just to make use of the laws they've already created. But for some reason, they're not doing that. In terms of re reaction from the government, has there been any reaction? And, you know, has there been any explanation as to why they're not using or enforcing their laws? Um, the only reaction I've had is from the Tourism Board, who um, have described my article as malicious. Um, and that was upsetting to me because there was nothing malicious about my article. My, my article was um, born out of concern for children and out of a wish to raise awareness um, for, what I, um, for what's happening there. Um, and, um, you know, out of concern with a situation that I witnessed with my own eyes. Um, now, I didn't, I haven't been able to, um, I haven't arrested any, uh, I haven't conducted a citizen's arrest on any paedophiles. Um, and that's uh, beyond the limits of my capabilities, really. Uh, but what I did see was how easy it is for Western uh, tourists to gain access to tiny Gambian children. 
I mean, in, in, in my country, if you approached a family and said, can I spend a day or a week with your child, they, say, they would say no, unless, unless they knew you really well. But it seems like in the Gambia, because of the economic situation there, people can turn up, complete strangers, and spend time alone with young children. Um, and that, for me, was hugely concerning. And I, I imagine in the Gambia, there's probably a, um, a temptation to try and cover this up because it makes the country look bad. But I think if that happened, that'd be really, really sad because um, this is something they need to um, come to terms with and they need to address it. And they need to do it sooner or later before more children are harmed. I mean, you, you can never pre protect all children. Child abuse goes on in every country all the time. It happens in my country, it happens in your country. But if you're not prosecuting, if you're not, if you're not even trying to prosecute people who are doing it and you're not taking a very proactive and public stance against this, and if there's any temptation to try and cover it up, that's wrong. And the people in power have to realise it's wrong and go after the people who are trying to harm their, your children, your own country's children. That's what any good government would do. But now, just looking at uh, the fact that this is now uh, British uh, uh, men who are allegedly do committing these crimes, has there been any response or reaction from the British government or, you know, just to say, listen, we are aware, we are seeing the story and, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's do something about it. Has there been any reaction from the British government? No, certainly not. And there, there don't seem to be any British law enforcement agencies that are actively working in the Gambia. Um, I've, I've contacted the National Crime Agency um, about this. Um, with the simple intention of handing over my photos to see if they could identify any of those men who are pictured um, and if any of them are known to them, which to me seemed like a quite a common sense um, step to take. Um, but they haven't wanted to engage. In fact, they've, they've, they've refused to. So as far as I, I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, the British government um, is, is not taking an interest in this. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't go as far as saying they're burying their head in the sand, but it's, it doesn't seem to be on their radar. I, I know the British government is, is very actively involved in, other, in a number of countries, including the Philippines, which has been a big focus of their efforts to stop um, British tourists travelling abroad and abusing children. But as far as I know, they're not doing anything in the Gambia. Um, if someone wants to come step forward and tell me that's not the case and they're doing this and that, then great. But that's, as, far, as far as I can tell, um, it's not happening right now. And the international community, the United Nations, for instance, has there been, are they aware of the situation or what's taking place in the Gambia currently? And, uh, you know, if, if they are aware, what are they doing about it, if anything? Uh, the UN is very aware, um, and it, uh, uh, they travelled to the Gambia last year and, and did a fairly comprehensive report, which I've read. Um, and I think that was a positive step forward. Um, that, that report didn't get as much attention. Um, as the one I wrote, sadly, um, that's just because my, my report went on Sun Online, which is one of the most widely read, uh, we read websites in the world. Um, so now everyone is reacting about, um, to it and talking about it. But the, the UN report uh, was, um, you know, showed um, clearly what's happening there. And um, it's a shame it didn't get more of a reaction. Um, UNICEF also travelled um, to the Gambia some time ago. Um, and filed a similar report, uh, filed, um, found similar things. Um, and there's an organisation called ECPAT that has been actively working in the Gambia to try and make this better. Um, and the Sun Online actually made an appeal for people to do donate to ECPAT um, because they are trying to um, help things over there. Um, so um, I think it's, I think international organisations like the UN need to take more of an interest because I think a lot of this has gone unreported and it's gone unnoticed by the world. Um, but yes, there, there definitely has been, um, uh, you know, some some previous reports, and 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 that, and that can only be a good thing. And what are the families saying, Graham? You, did you manage to? You, obviously, you, in, in putting your story together, um, you probably spoke to a lot of the families, and uh, you know their reasoning behind it. I mean, selling a child for about uh, um, uh, two pounds, which is uh, close to about uh, what forty rand. Um, you know how how. What, what is their reasoning? Desperation, um, you know, the poverty situation in the country. What are they saying? And when the children come are brought back to their families, what happens? Uh, well, I did speak to some Gambians who are very concerned about this um, and have made efforts to try and protect the children uh, that they see around them, excuse me. Um, 
But um, a lot of Gambians are, um, I mean, in Gambia, there's a culture of silence, and people don't like to talk about things like this. Um, and I saw that t time and time again whilst I was there, and I've seen it again since, since I left. Um, so it's not an easy subject to, to broach with people, and it's something people um, are, are, are very reluctant to um, open up about. Um, but I mean, I've been contacted on social media by a lot of people who are saying that they've seen this with their own eyes and have tried to intervene. I've, I've been contacted by people who say that they've reported things to the police and they wish more had happened. Um, so I think there is a, a growing consciousness about this. And I, and I, I hope that um, my report um, might, might help in some way. Um, uh, it's a story I definitely plan to keep on covering um, for what it's worth. I'm going to um, keep looking into this. I've got various interviews lined up, um, and I'm going to post about it as much as I, poss as much as I possibly can on my website, which is um, www.mystorymedia.co.uk. Um, so it's become something um, that I've become uh, very passionate about, and I, and I hope people in the Gambia um, will um, take an equal, and in fact, I think, I hope they'll take much more of an interest in this in future um, so that, um, you know, some progress can be made. Graham, thank you so much for your time this evening and joining us on The Globe. That is British journalist Graham Califord joining us via Skype from London.